Welcome to Rolling Intentions, my name is Jason. Uh, today, uh, we just finished Monster Hearts, um, the second session. We never really got a conclusion, um, so we'll probably end up doing this some other time to find a conclusion. Um, it's interesting, but uh, either way, we've got... Charles, playing Lenora the Ghost. Mike, playing Marcel the Vampire. The Dead. Dead. Ass. <laughs> <laughs> Magorb, Keeper of the Chalice of the Damned, the Mighty Fae. Well, what was your character's name? Cat. I thought Cat. you flushed that chalice Cat. earlier. Oh, God. Okay, and... Yeah, um, damn the toilet bowl a little. <laughs> and, we're, and we're doing a review on Monster Hearts uh, by Joe McDaldo. Um, so, um... The game is about uh, a s- stories about a story game, I guess, about messy lives of teenage monsters. Everybody gets to choose what's called a skin, uh, and the skins are basically character classes, uh, much like the classes the, the classes that are in um, Apocalypse Worlds, um, and all the moves that, that associate with them um, are, are linked to them. And then there's the the fae, the werewolf, the vampire, the mortal. The ghost, um, there's the, the infernal, the, the queen, the colonel. The colonel. Yeah. Yeah. The colonel. Uh, the ghoul. Yeah. Infernal. Uh, infernal. the ghoul, the, the ghost, the witch, the yeah. vampire. So, I'm study. No, no, I think it's all. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and each of them have their own, I guess, specialty. Oh, the chosen and the mortal. We did miss two. We did miss two, right? Yeah, I think have specialty. And then we did have a chosen at the beginning, uh, and then, uh, the chosen is only here. here. So, um, yes, so now we have a, a... The game turned into a little bit different because there was no big looming thing in the end. I sort of kind of put it towards the end, but really I, I, there was no nothing I could do with it because there was no chosen to defeat it, so yeah. I really don't know what to do, right? So I was trying to go back towards it, but... Anyway. Yeah, it's kind of hard to do when, when technically the chosen is what needs to have four strengths to defeat it and stuff, yeah. whatever, so... But either way, uh, the game relies on uh, the same rules as Apocalypse Roll, though we didn't do a review of Apocalypse Roll or even play a game of it yet. Uh, it, very, it works sort of like uh, Dungeon World, where you play the fiction, uh, the fiction leads to moves, and these moves are what you use to activate things. The moves that you can use, that well, the moves that everybody can use, starting out of the, uh, out of the box, let's say, for any type of skin, is uh, turn someone on, lash you physically. Um, hold steady. Uh, hold steady. Uh, shut someone down. Shut someone down and bit gaze into the abyss. And manipulate an NPC. And manipulate an NPC, that's right. So these are the things that you can do out of the box with your character. Uh, and a lot of the times they get you into more shit because they're all sort of not directly helpful. Um, but they do make the story continue. And then every other skin has their own moves and, and passives uh, that they have, uh, which could uh, which are story driven as well. Um so, oh, when will the murder stop? <laughs> Everything's red. Everybody's dead. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, uh, if uh, the the game pr- pretty much plays out with uh, two d sixes for each person, when you get to a move, uh, you basically ask them, "Are you trying to do this move?" And if they are, then you just take the dice and roll it. Um, they get experience points if they if they roll one of the ones that are checked off, and you check them off at the beginning of each session. Uh, that, that's your four stats, which are hot, cold, uh, volatile, and dark, which which have all have certain things. Hot means that your character is fucking hot. Uh, they're they're you know, able to turn people on yep. and manipulate them. Yep. Uh, cold is their ability to shut people down and hold steady, to ability to act cool in a situation. Yeah. Volatile is the ability to fight or flight. It's literally lash out physically or run away. Uh, but your dark power is your ability to gaze into the abyss and see what the future holds. Yeah. Or maybe just the insides of your tortured mind. Yes. And, and different uh, skins could act could use these stats as well. Yeah. At the beginning of a session, you choose uh, the person who has the most strings on you, uh, and they get to check off one of those stats. Uh, and every time you roll that stat, you get experience. And then the MC or the game master also chooses one. Uh, and this does direct the way that the game flows because a lot of people want to get experience. Oh yeah. So it, it really it really took control of my character for me, having hot as my stat both times. 
I'm a ghost. I naturally start at negative one hot. Uh, because it was highlighted, I put it up one. Or because I suspected it would be. And when I advanced, I later put it up once, and I have one hot. And uh, my character ended up doing a lot of that. I enjoyed that. It, uh, just kind of having my hand played for me again made it a lot easier to decide what I should be doing at any given point. Yeah. And it led to some very interesting contra- uh, contrast. Uh, conflicts? Conflicts, thank you. Sure. No problem. It's God. <laughs> Joseph. Yeah. So uh, the game does play out. Um, basically, everybody's a, a suit in a, in a homeroom. You set up like your homeroom, which basically is the people that are in your classroom. Um, you set up your seating arrangements, and then you make relationship charts uh, for each person and how they re- reflect their relationships among each other, uh, what kind of relationship they have with other people. Uh, that sort of thing, or and what what type of where do they fit in society? Yeah. Uh, so other other than that, I mean, that's basically the game. I mean, there's there's not a whole lot more to it other than the fact there's oh, of course, there's strings, uh, which are probably the most powerful mechanic in the game. Uh, the strings give you a whole bunch of different things that you can do to each other, and the way you get them uh, varies. Um, you can get strings by turning someone on, uh, shutting them down. Uh, it's a couple different ways of getting you. Yeah. And, and a couple more added by the skins. And by the skins as well. And the sc- strings can be used to... You can add one to your roll. You can subtract one to someone else's roll. Uh, you can... Um, you can offer them an experience point to do what you want if you're uh, targeting uh, a player character. You can force a player character to hold steady in order to carry out a certain action. You can add extra harm to whatever harm you're dealing them, so that's a plus one. Yeah. Or you can place a condition on them. If you're going against an NPC, you can add one to your roll against them. You can add three to your manipulate an NPC roll. Uh, you can cause them to falter, hesitate, or freeze it momentarily. Extra harm and place a condition. Right. Uh, so it has a little bit of difference with the NPCs. Now, NPCs themselves also have different things they can do, uh, such as they can put an NPC's action uh, against them with an advantage, um, add an extra harm to whoever harm the NPC is dealing with, uh, place a condition on them, offer an experience points to do what they want, or um, come out of nowhere with a hard move. And hard moves are basically uh, a bunch of principles and such that I would use. It's the MC dicking us over. Yeah, and there's a list of things you do, like separate them, put them together, and they all have like different aspects. So basically it's what you would do with a regular GM, it's just they're, they're put into detail, so, and, and they kind of give you an idea. So when I look at these, I, I don't, like, I could have, a lot of the times, I could have just said, Go with the obvious thing. One plus one harm, whatever, or whatever. Right? Just go with the obvious thing. But a lot of times you don't want to do that. You want to. It's you not want, interesting. That's right. It's not interesting enough, so you want to put a different twist on it. And this is basically a list of ways to, to put interesting twists on it uh, without having to, without having to take it up on your own or feel guilty about screwing over your players. True. Yeah, because it's how basically it's built into the game to do so. Yeah. And it does, and also makes the game not so antagonistic, because I really don't think you guys felt like I was coming down on you personally. Oh, heck no. There was a target on everyone's head. Yeah. So, like, nobody felt like, okay, the NPC, or the, the GM or MC is trying to, cut, is out to get me, or anything like that, because everybody played <laughs> themselves, right? I'm sure someone here felt like people were out to get him. Yeah, definitely. So. <laughs> and I will take my revenge upon the whole town. <laughs> So, uh. Um, out to get you, man. You're just such a squishy target. I enjoyed how much of this was high school gar- girls gossiping with each other to, uh, to create different uh, ideas of what was going on in people's minds to control uh, the classroom. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it does emulate a, a high school setting pretty interestingly. Uh, it does. Um, well, homeschool's a great idea. I'm going to be stealing that in some form for another RPG. Mm. No clue how. No, but it's, it's a cool. It's, it's just a relationship chart, really. You can yeah. do this for any system. Yeah. Uh, Burning Wheel does it too. Right, where it has a relationship type. It's not really a chart, but you get to make relationships at the beginning yeah. of the game. Yeah. Maybe you find don't up mention that game anymore. Not for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you find a, G- a GMing Apocalypse World. They'll do something like Homeroom for the game that you start in or something. Yeah, well, you can... We'll have to see what characters yeah, we'll have, we'll, yeah, and best thing to do is read over the... We want to try to stick with the base rules for the podcast, though. Yeah. So, but well, we'll see. There might be something in there in the rules that might allow you to sort of do that. Right? So, um, anybody got any, like, a couple, a little bit of words to add to the game? I mean, some stuff they liked about it, some stuff they didn't like about it, some stuff that was frustrating, some stuff that wasn't frustrating. I found the advancement was very straightforward and very 
Good. Right, and the advancement is like you can gain experience by rolling, like I said, the stat that's checked off, or you can even offer somebody an experience point to do what you want if you have a string on them. String to burn. Uh, once you have five uh, experience, you can get an advancement. Now, we didn't go through this, but there's also a thing called chrono moves, which you get when the end of seasons. Um, so a season we could have gotten that today. Yeah, <laughs> if, if we want to count this as, a, as the end of yeah, a season, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, usually, an end of a season is after one big event resolves. Yeah. So I think after the the Marcel's dealt with, that would probably be a big event. Or that maybe, been, maybe him in the Grove because Marcel Marcel turned into like the the big baddie at, towards the end. Oh, yeah. he, he became the, 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 the main antagonist. It all started with the fucking teacher pushing me around wanting to know where the fuck I live. Yeah. But it's funny, though, because the game does that, hey? Like, everybody, like, the game has oh, yeah. protagonists and antagonists, but you don't know who's in protagonist and antagonist. And unlike a lot of games where the antagonist sort of, like, you don't know what happens with the antagonist, because a lot of the times when you play RPGs, it just focuses on the heroes in a party, uh, and the antagonist usually is just, oh, some evil guy in the background or whatever. Where this he's just sitting around in his yeah. castle. Everyone is resting for two yeah. weeks every time they get in a battle. Yeah, and this in this game, the antagonist is a living, breathing entity. Yeah, uh, especially if it's another player because they're fucking. You get to see what they do with their daily lives and how they're manipulating the situation as the world is li- living. Yeah, it's like a living yeah. environment, which I, I think is really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really thought that the way Marcel became the killer was really... Like, you didn't know that was going to happen. I you know didn't know that was going to happen. No it idea. It happened, and then it snowballed. I'm sorry, did you tell me that I didn't know that at some point Mike was going to murder people? Because i got to tell you, that is bullshit. <laughs> well, I didn't know he was going to become, like, the main antagonist. Though. I didn't expect him to become the main yeah. antagonist. No, he, he basically became the big boss man. Kinda. I started killing no. people indiscriminately. <laughs> And apparently being squashed, <laughs> being stabbed by a stake that I held in my hands, and fucking, I got killed by this bitch fave chick that decided to kick me while I was down. <laughs> Not kick, step on. Uh, so it's I, a I have, figure of speech. You know you liked it. So this, this was Not a much enough. higher paced, much more intense session than the first one. What did the fronts of that have to do with it? Uh, okay, so um, let me go down to that. So there is no fronts. In, no. No. Okay. So there's something else. Um, and the, so the very first session, what you do um, is you you play you, you you sit down and you watch what everybody else does. Yeah. And you go through. That's why it was very slow and it. Yeah. It wasn't. Un- it was character building, but it was slow. Yeah. It was still fun, but but there was no a lot of action. There's nothing really big or and intense happening, right? Um, so what happens with that is I learn about your characters and then. I create things called menaces. Um, okay. Yeah, and menaces are basically things that set up stakes. So, for instance, a menace that I put down was the party. And the stakes were, will Peter get his revenge on Marcel? Uh, the other one is, will Phil sleep with Kat? These are pre-done, these are pre-done stakes. Uh, what happens when Joseph finds out about Leona's secret? That was one of the other mistakes. <laughs> and it all happens. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, dear. Right? So all See, this happened. What 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 I should have done instead of writing, like, uh, instead of writing what do you want, I should have write, uh, you know who I am. You should, uh, you should, you should have, you know, you should have the wisdom to yeah. guess who I am. But but still, it turned it really interesting. Oh right? fuck yes! Uh, so then you write down threats. <laughs> Did you have any clue I was going to do anything? I like have that? no idea. Like I have no idea what you guys are doing, right? <laughs> uh, so the other thing is, you write down threats, right? So write down Peter's one of the threats, and Peter was, uh, and then you get to have these things called cravings, offerings, and capacity, uh, okay. and with that choose one of each, right? So he was no, uh, nobil- uh, no- notar- notary. Lash out notoriety. Notoriety, yeah. Lash out and provoke reaction. That's what he wants. That's what he does. He offers power, which is shower with outlandish gifts. Um, which in a situation really didn't do the offering thing yet. Uh, and the capacity is calculated sacrifice, which he did by you know hitting basically Lucy and trying to pin it on. Uh, Marcel, right? It's not, exactly, it's not exactly how I pictured it to happen, though. But, you know, it was nothing I could come up with, right? And then Phil was imp- 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 intimacy, which was isolate them, which you try to, try to do with Cat. Sex was the offering. And cold betrayal was turn their friends against them. 
So <laughs> I don't think she needed any help. No. I was gonna say what friends? Yes. So the one she hasn't killed. Uh, Sean. No, I did have another menace for the disappearing of Victoria, but we never got really into that. Yeah. But um, at least that's that's how it works. At least that's how I see it works. I might be completely wrong, but that's how I can see. It. I've been reading it and trying to figure out how the menace thing works exactly. Yeah. It, it it seemed to work out pretty well. Just, it didn't take you long to come up with these, did it? I did it probably the last half hour. Like I did it, and then I took a nap before you guys came over. So it was like a half an hour. Less time. than that, yeah, fifteen minutes or so. So we got a really intense session out of. Very small minutes. amounts of planning. I love that. Yeah, fifteen minutes. I just wrote down a couple questions. I don't, I don't care if you're doing it right by the book. You're doing it. You're doing something right. Yeah. Uh, and then Finkel and Connor and Edward were all kind of written down. We found out Edward was a bit of a weirdo. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So so other than that, like, how do you guys feel with the the game? I really do enjoy it. I, I really it's... had my doubts. Really did not want to go hack into a high school setting. Turns out I enjoyed it, playing as a slutty female ghost. Um, I, I think it's good fun, and I had some good time with it. I think you have to go into it understanding what it is. Uh, that there's going to be a lot of fucking around, and uh, that's part of the fun. But the, you, you got to go into it aiming to have fun with it, I think. Yeah. I think being familiar with Apocalypse World before coming into this really kind of helped. Yeah. It does, and um, to tell you the truth, if you read the book, it, it would help too. So I know. intended to, <laughs> right? Get the time. I know, but Apocalypse World and, and Monster Hearts and Dungeon World also have very similar yeah. states, right? So but, uh, uh, I'd like to give Mike's opinion on this, but uh, he sort of took off. So um, I feel like it's a very strong game and a very fun game. Uh, it's it's a lot. How much fun you have is a lot up to the creativity of the people involved, right? Yeah, I think it's intense too. And Apocalypse World yeah. is very much like that too. It drains I, you up quickly. I really can't wait to jam it. Yeah, uh, I this, have so many ideas for apocalyptic worlds. Yeah, seeing which ones I can work with it. Yeah, uh, I think like especially in, in the same thing. The fronts are very short. If you look at the, sh- the fronts, you, you can do all that in ten minutes. Like, yeah, no, there's nothing to it, right? Um, and the one thing I, I like about this game uh, is that, yeah, there's no preparation. I fucking hate doing preparation. Uh, I remember once before I did a preparation for Monster Hearts, and I spent a good hour coming up with different things for each person. And I didn't realize that I'm not supposed to do that. I'm just supposed to make a menace and they ha- ask questions, right? And that's what I did, and it turned out even better. So Yeah. Um, yeah, but other than that, uh, yeah, so I think the game uh, has, I think Joe did a good job of this game. It, it is a Apocalypse World hack, um, and uh, the fact that he's a Canadian uh, game designer, I think that gives us props, I think. Yeah, I or, think really positively of this game. Uh, also, uh, with, with we're, since we're talking about Apocalypse World hacks, there is a couple. Uh, there's another one called The Regiment, um, and there's another one that Aaron told me about that looked really interesting, and I want to take a look at it, too. Uh, but a lot of people are making Apocalypse World hacks. In fact, uh, Joe has on his website at uh, buried uh, buried uh, with ceremony dot com. Uh, he actually has how to make your own Apocalypse World hack, and he's got point A. This is what you do. Point B is what you do. This, and it got like the list of moves and how you do it and how the stats work out. So he, he wrote down a formula of how to make your own Apocalypse World hack. I don't know why you call them, why, why why we call them hacks back in my day. We called them rip-offs, because that's basically what they were. Uh, but the I games are so is, different. This isn't a rip-off at all. No. This is, it, it's so different than the it, game. It's, it's just, just about the same system. It's yeah. just being honest about its inspiration. It's a different thing. Yeah. It has a different intensity. The, the thing is with Apocalypse World is, the Apocalypse World, if you didn't play it in Apocalypse, it doesn't work. No. Right? It's not, it's not a system like, like D&D, where you can take the system and put it into whatever you the want. first rule of Apocalypse yeah. World yeah. is to barf Apocalyptica. If you do not barf Apocalyptica, you're not playing Apocalypse World or anything even remotely like it. You don't what? It's, it's a thing that you do as a, as a master of ceremonies in Apocalypse World. You have to, you have to talk about the Apocalypse and, and put people into the setting and, and feel the world uh, and make up facts that's not, not necessarily are coherent with what we're, we're, we're used to. It's actually also a player guidance. On a lot of their stuff, they're supposed to remember, hey, this is the Apocalypse. Yeah. So. And that's uh, so. That's Monster Hearts. Uh, I love the game, uh, and I uh, hope uh, we get to play more like games like this. Uh, I will say that it's draining. I will say that uh, long sessions. This would game would just fuck you. 
Yeah. Right. Like, this was a pretty long session, actually. All right. Well, thanks, Scott, guys.